Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for our lives. I'm your host, Kyle Norman. After a brief message from one of our sponsors, we will continue with our Journey to the Cross series and listen to today's verse. Hello, I'm Carol McCracken, and I'd like to invite you to join me and our team on the Your Daily Bible Verse podcast. This podcast examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for us. I'm excited to tell you about the new series the host team will share with you during this season of Lent. Each episode will be a journey to the cross. We will follow Jesus through some of his most significant steps in the Gospels, focusing on a particular verse as we always do. It'll be a progressive series. Join us daily as we follow Jesus doing what he was born to do to save us all. You can find us on Life Audio or whatever you listen to podcast content on. Today's verse can be found in John chapter 13, verse 26. Jesus said, The betrayer is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. When my brother and I were young, we used to steal candy bars from the local convenience store. I would be the shield, blocking the attendant from view, and my brother would line his pockets with Snickers and Mars bars. Now, despite our well-thought-out plan, it wasn't long before the attendant was wise to our scheme. As sly as two single-digit boys thought we were, it turned out that all of our actions were observed. We were made to sit off to the side, and then my dad was called. This was worse. The person of love and protection, the one that we knew so well, the one who provided for us and cared for us, knew what we had done. We were unmasked. And as he walked into the store with our brother and I sitting off to the side, well, our hearts sunk. I often wonder what Judas was thinking when he went through the Passover meal in the upper room. Jesus sits beside him, talking in length about his upcoming death and his resurrection. And as Jennifer reminded us of last week, Jesus had just finished washing the disciples' feet, an act of radical service, audacious grace, and unfathomable kindness. And Judas was present in all of this, the thirty pieces of silver lining his pocket as he sang the Passover hymns, drank the wine, and fell to Jesus pour water over his feet. And during all of this, I often wonder if Judas must have felt that he had gotten away with everything. His ruse had been undetected. His betrayal remained in the shadows. Nobody would be wiser because Jesus hadn't seen anything. How his heart must have dropped when Jesus started talking about his upcoming betrayal. Jesus is clear about this. He is plain and uncomplicated in speech. Jesus openly rebukes the betrayer. Woe to the one who betrays the Son of Man. And it would be better if that person had never been born. Did Judas take a hard swallow? Did he remain uncomfortably silent? And then comes this full realization that Judas' sin did not occur when Jesus' back was turned. The betrayer is the one to whom I give this piece of bread. And then he hands it to Judas. Judas was unmasked. We like to think that we go about unobserved, particularly when we act contrary to our faith. We assume, or maybe are tempted to believe, that Jesus has more important things to observe in this world than our petty infractions. When we think that we remain undetected, we might think that our sin really isn't all that bad. But sin is sin. It matters not if the sin is the theft of a small candy bar at the local convenience store or something larger or more lasting. 
Sin is always a betrayal of the Lord, and the Lord knows our infractions. This is the constant revelation in Scripture. The Lord saw Adam and Eve eat the forbidden fruit and hide in the trees. God saw David seduce Bathsheba on the roof of the palace, and Jesus sees Judas slink into the shadows to betray him for financial gain. What is more, the Lord knows our infractions as well. The Lord sees and feels deeply all our betrayals. This season of Lent, our meditative walk that we are taking to the cross, it is designed to remind us of the frailty of our faith. Judas's betrayal of Jesus is to remind us of our own. But it's not to move us to condemnation. Recognizing that Jesus sees our denials and sins isn't so that we can feel divinely lambasted, cast out of God's good graces forever. No, it is so that we can repent, so that we can turn ourselves into the loving kindness of God, in whom there is always forgiveness and always grace. Because if Jesus knows our deeds, why should we keep them in the shadows? All the actions of grace and love that emanate from Jesus speak more profoundly when we realize that it is freely offered to us who betray or deny or walk away. After all, Jesus could have had his last supper with everybody but Judas. Judas would just be not invited. And Jesus could have washed the disciples' feet and skipped Judas. He was the betrayer, after all. Why does he deserve such expressions of divine grace? But that's the thing about grace. Grace is never about who we are or what we have done. It's always a testimony about who Jesus is and what he does for us. Now, sadly, Judas never turns back to Jesus. Even after all these expressions of love made tangible in bread and wine and the washing of feet, Judas leaves the upper room and carries out his betrayal. And because he never returns to a place of faith or to fellowship with the other disciples, his end is tragic. The weight of his sin crushes his soul and he hangs under his own sense of condemnation. But that doesn't have to be our fate. Our hidden betrayals keep us from Jesus, not because Jesus doesn't reach out to us, but because we mistakenly believe that we are forever condemned. I've heard some people say, well, if Jesus only knew what I had done, he wouldn't love me. And so they live with a sense of shame or guilt or condemnation. But guess what? Jesus does know. The fact that our betrayal is perpetually unmasked before him should not drive us away from Jesus, but rather cause us to run more closely to him. Because ultimately, the cross is the full expression that even the most extreme of our betrayals will always be met with grace and forgiveness if we would but turn into it. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Music.